Hello everyone, uh, I am Jean-Christophe Hilary. I live in Japan and I'm a translator. And uh, so here is my second presentation on this very prestigious stage that is the Emacs conference. Following my Let's Translate the Two Million Words in the Emacs Manual in 2021, my topic this year, always related to translation, is uh, pre-localizing Emacs, or much less pretentiously, just make sure that your strings don't mix up roles. So for some reason, I resumed Emacs use around 2016. And as I was re rediscovering the thing, I found really old outline modes files here and there on my machine. And I started to experiment again and write again with Emacs. I think that at the time I was coming from Aquamax and because of an integration bug with macOS, I decided to check what was going on in the code. That was my first official contribution. So as I was happily installing and uninstalling things, I noticed something weird one day. Let me enlarge that picture. See? And even if I were not a translator, I would not like that string. And obviously the same bug bites you when the string tells you to erase the package. Boom. So we agree there that we have a problem here. So I started spelling into the code and at last, that was my feeling because I really am not a programmer by any stretch of the imagination. And what I found was an amazing piece of natural language engineering that was mixing code with English suffixes and all that. And I could see that the people who had written that code were pretty smart, but had missed a number of edge cases that produced the above bugs. That was my first experience with all the message related functions, format, concat, message, etc. But even with my beginner's eyes, I could see that something was off. Because when you want to produce natural language strings, you never, ever should use replace regrex in string to add an ing or an ed suffix to change the mode of a sentence. But that's what I was seeing was happening. So what we had to deal with here was way more than just a missed pearl. It was an attempt at engineering all the message strings destined to the user with a smart code that was making assumptions on the structure of words. And in the localization world, that's a big no-no. So I'm a translator, and such UI strings issues have been sorted out decades ago. So I was a bit shocked. The final patch took me about a year to write, because I'm slow, because I needed to verify and understand a lot, because there are plenty of rules and plenty of people who are explaining you very nicely what the rules are, because I have kids. And because the Emacs development list is such a cool place to be that you often forget what you, why you're there sometimes. Anyway, for people who can't click on a video, and I can't either, here are the relevant parts with some short comments. I'll be talking with localization in mind, knowing full well that Emacs localization is not on the map at the moment. So first, there is this thing between format and concat. And if I remember correctly, format is better for user-facing things, and concat is better for internal things. Here, there are two things. First, the rule that we have when we prepare strings that need to be localized is never ever make assumptions on the way numbers are expressed in the language. Here, the assumption is that we have either a singular or plural form, and that's not always the case. That usually means that you should externalize numbers and find a generic way to express them. So it makes for slightly less natural language strings, but it's, it's better anyway. Then we have that comma there that's trying to be externalized, and that's weird, so I put it back into the sentence. Here we have another construct, or two rather, that really should not be used like this. It's print1 that uses quoting characters, just like print, and print c that does not. And you see why they were combined together. And they were both trying to be really smart about which article to put in front of a vowel. And you just don't do that. You just keep things simple. Here again, the code is trying to be smart, but is really not much more efficient than plainly stating what you want. And here again, we have concat things that uh, we could just use to plainly state what we want to state. So instead of concat, I just put a message. And uh, here we have something that's very cute. It's a computerized parole. Here again, assuming that there are only plural or singular forms. 
but the end string is not that much more natural than the fix, the code is less efficient, and is harder to understand. Here again, the code is trying to make smart things where it could be much simpler. That is the part where you get the number of packages and their names. Here, the whole sentence with the semicolons and the question mark are split in parts between which something will be inserted. That's really ugly and difficult to read. Here again, another ing waiting to be regex inserted into the code. And here, at last, we get to the point where everything started. And you can see that unlike in the other spots, there is no possibility for the expression to be singular. So I guess that if it hadn't been for that bug, I would not have found the other items and we'd be left with code that works, of course, but that is harder to understand and maintain. Last but not least, a last version of just plainly state what you mean to state. Keep it simple. So, um, first we have this wonderful contribute file that uh, is very explicit about how we must proceed when contributing code. So, that's really the first place that we should all read. Uh, the readme file is pretty cool too, especially at the beginning of the process when you're not sure whether you want to fix that bug or just report it. And then we've got packages. Uh, we've got a number of packages that are really helpful uh, when it comes to reading the information and the manuals. Um, so I'm mentioning three of them here, and I think they are the most important uh, for us. So helpful is on the right, and it's overflowing the window with all the contextualized information it provides, and the standard help is on the left. Um, so, I mean, really, there are like two or three uh, screen full of information in the helpful output, so you really only see a part, but I guess if you use it, you, you, you know what I'm saying. What I like the most here is the view in the manual part where you can actually click uh, and even get more information that's sometimes easier to read and uh, understand. Uh, and then you've got the info versus inform uh, format. When you're in the manual, inform makes a huge difference. You can see here that you've got colorized items. And also in the middle, you've got that read part that's green and bold. Um, in inform, sorry, in info, it's not a specific object, it's just a string. And in form, it's, a, it's actually a link that you can click and actually uh, go to that read manual page. And so now uh, we've got which key. Which key is a savior for beginners to just wait half a second or something and Emacs will show you all the keys that you can access from the prefix combination that you just typed. So it's really helpful for discovering functions and uh, learning new functions, getting used to them. And so that whole process started, uh, it was uh, May 23, 2017 with that thread uh, when I found a bug. So I just bumped into an English code bug this morning in package L. Uh, when I when one package is not needed anymore, the message is package menu operation finished, one packages are no longer needed, etc. And um, so I was asking whether we had best practices for using messages. And we had a, a whole thread about that. And while I was discussing on that thread, I started that new thread, which is uh, package L strings. And um, so the whole thing actually ended on June 27, 2018. So a year after uh, with that message from, uh, from Noam uh, telling me that, yes, I can close the bug. Um, and, uh, and that was it. So it took about a year to finish that. Um, what I did learn basically is that um, helping with Emacs is not that difficult. Uh, it takes time when you're not um, fluent with the code, but that's okay because the reference is excellent and there are a lot of people who are here to help. And um, basically uh, the solution to all our problems is keep it simple and straightforward. And as you can see in that, in that patch, even if it's a beginner's patch, um, 
what I did shows that uh, shows what can be done by Emacs list beginners to help with threading the strings to reduce the number of potential English bugs, and then to make Emacs strings easier to be handled by relocalization processes one day. But it doesn't have to be about strings, uh, because strings can be an easy entry point to Emacs, uh, but it can be any itch that you want to scratch. And my real conclusion is that Emacs is free software, and that what that means is mostly that it allows you to do things that you would never uh, have thought of being able to do before. And that's really uh, the biggest lesson to be learned here. So I want to thank you, all the people who allowed this to be uh, happening, uh, allowed me to learn a bit and uh, contribute a bit to that um, wonderful piece of software that Emacs is. And thank you everyone for listening. And hopefully I'll see you next year with a, a different uh, translation related uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much.